fascinating study. Septuagint of Job 38, 24 says, and from where proceeds the frost or from where is the south wind dispersed over the whole world under heaven? So God is kind of asking Job these rhetorical questions, like questions that he couldn't really know the answer uh, to. But uh, I think if Job had the book of Enoch, he might have had an idea. What do yeah, you think? He may have. Ecclesiastes 1, 6 says, blowing toward the south, then toward the north. The wind continues swirling along. And I found it interesting. This was right after he was discussing the circuit of the sun in the same passage, right? Ecclesiastes 1, 5 verse after he's talking about the wind uh, turning toward the north. The wind continues swirling along and on its circular courses, the wind returns. Mm -hmm. But here in Enoch. Sure. 74, 10 through 14. First Enoch says this. Uriel showed me 12 gates open for the circuit of the chariots of the sun in heaven from which the rays of the sun shoot forth. From these proceed heat over the earth, and they are opened in their stated seasons. They are for the winds and the spirit of the dew, when in their seasons they are opened, opened in heaven at its extremities. Twelve gates I beheld in heaven, at the extremities of the earth, through which the sun, moon, and stars, and all the works of heaven proceed at their rising and setting. Many windows also are open on the right and on the left, one window at a certain season grows extremely hot. At a certain season, one of the windows in the firmament grows extremely hot. So here's something that modern mainstream science is not discussing. Gates in a literal physical structure of a domed vaulted ceiling called heaven, the mm -hmm. firmament, right, has gates through which winds flow. And these winds can be different temperatures. Enoch 75, 1 through 3. And at the extremities of the earth, I beheld 12 gates open for all the winds from which they proceed and blow over the earth. Three of them are open in the front of heaven, three in the west, three on the right side of heaven, and three on the left. The first three are those which are towards the east, three are towards the north, three behind those which are upon the left towards the south, and three on the west. So 12 in total. And he says from four of them proceed winds of blessing and of health. And from eight proceed winds of punishment. Hmm. Okay. It is. So I've done my best to try to illustrate that winds coming through the extremity at the extremities of the earth mm -hmm. through gates in the firmament. Yep. And this is what we talked about in episode four of the first season when we looked at Antarctica. And I tried to show that clip of the Russian um, the, the Russian station down there in Antarctica that said all weather patterns of the entire earth start in Antarctica. We did cover that. Yeah. Episode four, Antarctic yeah. ends of the earth. So that means if the, that, that would make sense with this model is that all weather patterns. And that's why they put up those balloons almost uh, all the time that like every week or more than three times a week or whatever at the uh, Russian Antarctic station. And they're told when to release the balloons because they say that when they calculate the weather patterns from Antarctica, it helps them know what to expect on the main continents. So, yep, it yep. would make perfect sense if they're coming through different portals uh, on four sides of the firmament coming into the land mass of the earth. Yeah, the, the weather patterns, the, the seasonal yeah. climates changes are often dependent on the weather coming through at Antarctica. And Enoch gives us the answer for why. I right. love that. Yeah, and it makes perfect sense, too, as far as why there would be some parts, like what we're about to read here, that heat comes out of, and there are some warm areas uh, that's been talked about in Antarctica. So yeah. as you read this, you'll see where I've circled based on the positioning of the earth, right? The yep. re relative to Israel, the, the promised land being at the south. And if you were to point straight up from there, the North Pole is in the center. And so you'll see what I'm saying here in a minute. All right. Okay. The first of these winds proceeds from the gate termed the Eastern through the first gate on the East, which inclines southwards from this goes forth destruction, drought, heat, and perdition from the second gate. The middle one proceeds equity. There issues from it rain, fruitfulness, health, and dew. And from the third gate northwards proceeds cold and drought. So what I like about these these different gates is even though they're all claimed to be on the east side right. of heaven, they each point a different way, which would be ideal thinking of it from a mechanical standpoint of like you have them angled. Basically, these these gates are angled as the wind comes yeah. through them. So Just that like a good circulation. Car, yeah. Take the vents in your car. Right. They're all on the dash and you angle them different ways. Yeah. 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 See, it's got a good circulation going, which is would be ideal for a, to be able to make it practical. 
Makes sense. And if this uh, model is correct that you've modeled here, that top gate on the right hand side in the red circle that we have on, on screen here would be the one that blows northwards cold and drought, which goes over what we call Antarctica. Mm -hmm. So it fits laterally. <laughs> it definitely fits. I just hope that we've made that clear. Yeah. And then from the center one, if this positioning is true, if destruction, drought, heat, and perdition come through that one, and if this map is somewhat accurate, at least for the positioning of, of Australia, this makes sense then too. Yeah. Because Australia is mostly kind of a, a drier, right? Kind of warmer climate. Yeah. And in Enoch 75, 68, it said, after these proceed the south winds through three principal gates, through their first gate, which inclines eastward, proceeds a hot wind. But from the middle gate proceeds grateful odor, dew, rain, health, and life. From the third gate, which is westward, proceeds dew, rain, blight, and destruction. So this is interesting because the third gate, which is westward, it dew, rain, blight, and destruction. It doesn't say frost, right? Mm -hmm. So I think this is fascinating because all three of these, you know, the, if we're looking at it from right to left with the three circles at the bottom of the image, mm -hmm. then the right would be the hot winds, and that would go up over uh, Saudi Arabia, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, India, you know, the, the hot micronesia like Desert. that whole area right yeah um and then the middle would flow up over africa the main body of africa where we have extremely fertile land mm -hmm. and then the and then the left hand side would flow over the the left atlantic area basically which produces a ton of hurricanes so i mean you know it's something to consider it really is yeah, yeah. man i can't wait to show what the some of the next stuff we got going on to keep in mind these these descriptions that you have right hot wind i've got highlighted that comes from the the one that inclines east on the on the south um gates here and there's there's certain descriptions for the type of climate that comes from each one of them and um you know if we look at the the south here we look at the east ones we look at the north and the west they don't, they don't all have the same descriptions, right? You would almost right. expect to see, oh, there's rain, there's hot, and there's cold coming from all of them. But it's not like that. There's specific certain ones. And what I love is that we're going to also see here shortly that every time winds are mentioned coming from a certain direction in the canon of Scripture, in the modern American 66 books, they match up with these descriptions of Enoch. That's beautiful. That's, so beautiful. I'll show that here pretty quickly. After these are the winds to the north, which is called the sea. And so this gives, I got to pause, this gives a new appreciation. You brought up, also I mentioned earlier that it would make sense if there was a, a body of land here in this large blank space, but I'm also getting comfortable with the idea that there might not be because okay. the north is called the sea. All right. You see how that works? That's cool. Sure. I think. So they proceed from three gates. The first gate is that which is on the east, inclining southwards. From this proceeds dew, rain, blight, and destruction. From the middle direct gate proceeds rain, dew, life, and health. And from the third gate, which is westwards, inclining towards the south, proceeds mist, frost, snow, rain, dew, and blight. Isn't blight normally like a disease that affects plants? Yeah. I guess that's just part of the destruction that comes through, right? Because you got eight gates that from proceeds destruction and stuff, right? And then yeah. blessing and health come from four. And this is, of course, taking a you know hundred year old translation. I don't know how they used blight in right. that back in the English hundred years ago, but neither. It, it did used to mean destruction on crops, mm -hmm. but that makes sense if you've got frost also and snow. But ultimately, yeah. I love I love the breakdown. Because if the middle gate's correct, which precedes rain, dew, life, and health, and if you look at the top down, it comes right over like the the beautiful fertile areas of the United States. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. interesting, as well as uh, South America, Central America. So it's interesting. So after these, in the fourth quarter, this is Enoch 75, 10 through 12. In the fourth quarter are the winds to the west. From the first gate inclining northwards proceeds dew, rain, frost, cold, snow, and chill. And from the middle gate proceeds rain, health, and blessing. And from the last gate, uh, which is southwards, proceeds drought, destruction, scorching, and perdition. That one's specifically hot to say scorching. Yeah. Right? The, the account of the 12 gates of the four quarters of heaven is ended. All right. So... We're looking top down though. Can I make a quick comment about the, the graphics we're looking at, right? Sure. Yeah. In some of these destructions. Mm -hmm. We're looking top down, and the, the viewer may be thinking that these gates are laterally on the firmament level with the ground. But it's not 
maybe they're a 45 degree angle. Right. If 90 degrees would be the center of the ferment looking down on the earth, 45 degrees would be, you know, midway point, And then 180 degrees would be a ground level. But maybe we don't know. Does it tell us where, what placement in the actual firmament that these, these blowing winds are blowing onto the earth? Is it from a 45 degree angle? Is it from straight laterally? You know, we, you know how, what is that? So what, I guess the zenith or the Alma Cantor of the firmament. Yeah. There's, there's different points of latitude and longitude that they have to describe yeah. the celestial sphere. Because this could make a lot, it could be a much easier lineup. I should put, I should say we could line up the effects of these portals and where these winds blow on the, the different geographical regions of the earth. If they were possibly placed at a 45 degree angle, and then the vents of each three are going to, to different directions. That would be very, very simple. Right. Yeah. I'd yeah. love to see it mapped out better in a 3D model. That would be yeah, that would and, be and that way you can still have the outer ice ring, but yet you still have the vents coming down, and then their their main wind patterns are are going towards the inner circle of the Earth, of the landmass of the Earth, and not directly pointed at the outer ice ring. So that would make a lot more sense as far as if we had a specific understanding of the placement of these vents with that are blowing winds into the Earth closed model. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but just for people out there that are, you know, thinking about well, how did, how how is the ice stayed perpetually in the ice ring of Antarctica around the flat earth if these hot winds are blowing over it, right? So maybe they're not blowing directly over it. Maybe they're blowing partially down onto it as the majority of the winds are going towards the center land masses of the of the flat earth. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Well said, brother. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd go to the next slide, here's what I was talking about, right? So in Proverbs 25, verse 23, it says, The north wind brings forth rain. And so we did see from the northern gates, rain was one of the things, whereas rain didn't come out of all of the, all of the directions. It only came out of, uh, I want to say, two or three of them, maybe. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it does come out of the, the north. So Proverbs lines up with Enoch there. What does Hosea say? The east wind will come, the wind of the Lord coming up from the wilderness, and his fountain will become dry and his spring will be dried up. Okay, so yet drought. And um, yet drought was one of the things mentioned from the eastern portals, gates, right? Yeah. As mm -hmm. well as Luke 12, 55, it says, and when you see a south wind blowing, you say, it will be a hot day. And it turns out that way. <laughs> that was <laughs> Yeshua speaking in Luke there. And uh, he was... He was lining up with what Enoch says about the southern gates and the winds that come through them as well. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. There's an entire intricate, yeah. architecturally designed layer above us right. to, to coordinate all the weather. It makes so much more sense than the than the randomness of supposedly on a spinning ball where none of the math adds up and none of the none of the the rays of the sun would add up to what we experience. And so, yeah, it just makes so much more sense with a wonderful proof of an actual created design. That uh, oh, yeah. love and praise our creator for. That's right. Praise the Romans, Romans 1, 19 through 20, right? Mm -hmm. His invisible powers and unseen nature is evident by what was made. So, yes, sir. Bless him. Yeah. And so, here's one of the things I'm most excited to show you guys. If you go to the next slide, and this is from actual weather data mapped out. I believe this specific set of data is from 2016, it says there. And then this is the winds at, uh, 700 hector hectopascals i believe is what they the the, the measure or the unit of of measure that they use for the pressures and so if you were to go to this website they have a an option to look at the azimuthal equidistant map and so nice. i've i've spun it because it wasn't it wasn't positioned in the same way that i've used on these other slides where where you got the you know uh, south america off to the left and positioned like I have with the north at the top of the ocean. So, but when I spun it and when I positioned it to where what I'm saying, maybe the north in Enoch's case is the north on this, these divots show up in, in the weather data, in these wind data. And right. I've, I've put in these little animations of like smoke or like wind blowing to kind of try to illustrate where new, new, uh, wind is being introduced into the enclosure right because right. anybody can you can you guys see that there's like actual breaks in the wind patterns right right here at northeast south and west basically it's pretty amazing and uh yeah i was blown away by that because i think that's a, a good example of how enoch could very very well be describing wow. reality in this weather weather mapped data describing what enoch describes or sh you know showing what enoch describes 
Yeah, that's pretty amazing. I wish I had a um, man. I wish I had some good sound effects where we could just drop the bomb right now. <laughs> this is the highlights of this episode. <laughs> so yeah, this is a. Uh, I mean, it's pretty beautiful, right? Basically, you're sitting there going, "Okay, wait a minute." So top-down weather patterns shows places where it looks like the weather's disrupted. Why would that be on a ball? And then specifically in this design, that would make no sense on a ball. Sure wouldn't. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. No, it should be a constant circulation because there's not even, you know, in these places where those little divots are on the edges, there's not even like land masses that would be, you know, disrupting that necessarily at each one of those points. So it does very much seem like there's an outside force <laughs> causing those those patterns. Wow, that's beautiful. Good catch, brother. Good catch.